Hello, welcome back to a new video. So recently I bought myself this brand new Insta360 X3. It is a 360 action camera, kind of like the GoPro in terms of functionality, but with added 360 abilities. And the reason why I bought it was because I needed a new camera for my recent trip to Vietnam. And it's been about four years since I last bought a new camera. I've been using the GoPro Hero 7 for about four years. And even though it's a decent camera, it's kind of boring and I wanted something new and exciting. Unfortunately, after using the Insta360 X3 for about a week, I've decided that it's not really that great of a camera. It's kind of expensive and overpriced. It's a bit boring and, might I say, lacking in luster as an action camera. So one of my main complaints about the Insta360 camera is the design. As you can see, it is quite a bulky and large camera compared to the GoPro Hero 7, you can see the size difference is quite noticeable. And they've gone for this kind of hand phone, smartphone design where it's elongated and rectangular and tall. So you'll notice that it is tall when it is standing upright compared to the GoPro, which is quite short and flat. And it's kind of like a short fat man, whereas the Insta360 is like a tall skinny man. And the problem with this is when you want to balance it like this, you can see it's not very stable and it's very easy to fall over and it's a bit scary when this thing falls over because as you can see it's got two lenses on both sides and they are quite bulbous and round so if this is falling down onto a hard surface like that you do have a risk of cracking the lens so you can see the lens is made out of glass if that lands on something hard like concrete or stone that's probably going to crack if you just let it drop like that so putting this down onto any kind of surface, you have to be very careful and place it down gently like that because there's no way you can just lay this down without the lens touching the surface because the lenses are on both sides. Now you could balance it on its side like that, but it is kind of tricky because the, the edges are rounded. As you can see, it is rounded. It's not perfectly flat. So you have to be a bit careful when you try to balance it on a flat surface it's kind of easy because this is a soft surface but if it was on like a harder flat surface like that it does want to fall over it's just this bag of peanuts is blocking it so look yeah it will just fall over like that and when I'm using my GoPro, I don't really have this problem because as you can see, every side of the GoPro is perfectly flat. Even the bottom is flat, so I can just plonk it down on anything like a table or the floor or even the ground if I want to do some kind of creative shots. But with the Insta360 X3, I don't really have the same flexibility. Now you could say, why don't you just use a tripod? Why don't you get a selfie stick that has tripod legs? And I don't use tripods or any kind of accessories with my action cameras because one of the main benefits of using an action camera like the GoPro or or the Insta360 is its portability. It's really small. Look at the size of this. I can just shove it in my back pocket and it's very unnoticeable in my pockets and very easy to carry around. But if I start adding GoPro mounts and tripods and selfie sticks and all that kind of mumbo jumbo, then the portability factor of these small action cameras basically gets destroyed and it's no longer very portable. Can you imagine putting this inside of the housing or this inside of some kind of case and then adding a tripod or a selfie stick and then trying to put that into your pocket? I don't think you'll be able to unless you have very big pockets. And even if you have very big pockets, it's gonna be very uncomfortable having this with a selfie stick in your pocket. So I don't like to use selfie sticks or tripods. I like to use the device as it was made. Sometimes I found myself in a situation where I couldn't use both of my hands and I really wanted to quickly put the Insta360 down onto some kind of surface without worrying about it falling over or cracking the lens if I just put it down roughly. And it was just kind of stressful trying to balance the thing on the table. I had to balance it like this. Don't know if you can see that. I had to balance it like that very carefully on table surfaces. If, for example, I wanted to have a meal at a restaurant and put the camera down and film myself eating my meal, it was just a lot easier to do that with my GoPro where there's basically zero chance of this falling over. Look, you can't even get this to fall over unless you purposely push it over, but this thing would never fall over. I could place it like that, I can place it like this, I can place it like that. And even if it falls over on its face, 
it doesn't really matter because it doesn't have like a round sticking out lens that is going to easily get damaged. Now there are lens guards and lens covers for the Insta360 X3 but they make the thing look so ugly and they look kind of scuffed and I've heard people say stuff about how the lens guards actually reduce the quality of the video image quality because it's made out of plastic and it has this weird effect on the lenses. So I don't really want to get a lens guard or a lens cover. Also, if you're not using a selfie stick, then every time you film with the Insta360 X3 and you pan the video frame down, you're going to be able to see your hand and it makes your hand look like it's some kind of weird deformed hand which is missing a few fingers. It looks kind of kind of weird and you can't really get rid of that because it's a 360 camera. So no matter where your hand is, no matter where you're holding the camera, your hand is going to be visible in the footage unless you have the special selfie stick. Now, I did go into the shop and have a look at the selfie selfie stick and it's a well-made selfie stick very nice and everything but it's just so big I didn't want to buy the selfie stick just because it's so huge and it was at least two times the size of the Insta360 camera and I don't really care about extending it to do those really weird looking drone shots I just want something small and portable in my pocket and if I got the Insta360 selfie stick it wouldn't have been very portable anymore so the design of the camera is not really that great I would have to say Okay, so next let's talk about the 360 functionality of the camera since it is a 360 camera and that is the main reason why I bought it instead of the GoPro 11. Now, I did think the 360 was pretty cool when I first played around with it, but I noticed that as the days went on during my Vietnam trip, I started to use the Insta360 X3 camera less and less and I went back to using my iPhone as my main vlogging camera and I started to not care anymore about the 360 functionality. So basically the 360 functionality is, well, you have an app that you download off of the app store and you can download your video straight from the camera straight to your phone. And then after you finish filming your 360 footage, you can then use your finger to pan and swipe around on the screen to choose what you want to show your viewers in your video you can just choose and then reframe it and select a frame and so let's also select how wide it is you can select super wide ultra wide wide or linear which gets rid of the round fishbowl effect so the main reason i bought the 360 camera was because in my mind i thought it'd be easier to have a 360 camera and not have to worry about what you're pointing the camera at with traditional cameras you have to point at what you want to film and then you edit it afterwards and you don't have the ability to reframe it. You have to frame it before you start shooting or whilst you're shooting. But with the 360 camera, because it's filming basically everything around it, you have the luxury of being able to frame stuff after you've finished shooting it. So you can just hold it up in front of you, walk around and it's filming everything. So once you're finished, f finished filming and you're ready to edit, you can then choose what you're going to show. And it is really impressive technology and everything. And it was kind of fun to play around with in the beginning, but it kind of made me realize that I do actually enjoy the process of framing my shots myself without using some kind of app or editing software. There's a very nice artistic and creative process that's involved when you're using your own eyes and you're trying to find a nice cinematic angle, trying to find nice lighting, trying to make your video look good. And that's kind of taken away with the 360 software because you don't really have to frame anything yourself. You just frame it afterwards whilst you're editing. So if you're a wannabe filmmaker and you enjoy the process of filmmaking, then it isn't really very fun using the 360 software or the app to frame your shots. It makes all of your shots just look kind of the same. I found myself going back to my iPhone to film videos more and more nearing the end of my trip in Vietnam and I was using the Insta360 X3 less and less, mainly because I just missed the process of framing my own shots while shooting without having to use an app to reframe it. Also, needless to say, the iPhone was just so much better in low light situations than the Insta360 X3. The Insta360 X3 is okay in low light, but compared to the iPhone, it's just no comparison. So in my conclusion, I would have to say that it's not that great of an action camera. It's very expensive for what it is. The 360 functionality does work really well, but depending on what you do, it's probably not that necessary or important to have. If you're not really going to do much extreme sports 
or things using a motorbike or a vehicle or paragliding or skydiving, then you probably don't really care about having 360 functionality. And maybe just a standard point and shoot GoPro will be fine for you. Or maybe just using your phone is, is fine, is good enough for filming your holiday videos. But I just found myself not really caring about using the 360 anymore. And I just felt like just pointing and shooting to frame my videos is good enough. 